Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Um, so a CDU build was requested, um, and admittedly, this is my third time trying to explain this weapon because there is just so much going on with it. Um, the CDU is Lyphos's primary weapon. Um, it is essentially two weapons in one, a auto a full auto shotgun, as well as its alternate fire, which is a glaive. Um, and the easiest way to think about this is you're basically modding to take advantage of the glaive. The glaive innately doesn't do a good deal of damage, but it can do pretty decent damage, especially at low levels. Even Star Chart, it can kill uh, Steel Path, it can kill enemies. Um, but the main scaling is going to be the primary fire. This guy, uh, let's take a look at its stats. We're going to do a full rundown of this, and I am going to attempt to keep this less than an hour, which was my first video explaining this weapon. Okay, so the primary fire, 20% crit chance, 2.4 uh, crit multiplier, status is garbage. Um, what will be a big plus for this weapon is that the base damage type is not split between IPS. It is pure puncture, which lets us know this is going to do a ton of damage to Grenier. Um, the 180 comes from the 6 and 8 multi-shot being multiplied by 30. 6 times 30 is 180. So there's where the total damage comes from. Um, accuracy is whatever. Uh, it's not super accurate, but it's a shotgun, so it's par for the course. The fall-off is actually pretty good. Uh, 26 meters to 52. At 52, your damage gets reduced from 100% all the way down to 3%. Uh, so something to be considered is that the fall-off, though it is a very broad range, this is definitely not a sniper. Um, fire rate is 3.8. Isn't too bad. Um, definitely not something to write home about. It's not incredibly high. Uh, and this weapon doesn't have a wind-up, say, like the comb or anything. Uh, magazine is 40, basically giving us almost 11 seconds of full auto fire. Uh, again, multi-shot is base 6. That's not bad. Um, has a little bit of an 8 punch through. Uh, one second. Pardon me, I just sneeze. Uh, reload is 2.2. Uh, that's not super bad. Uh, not super quick either. Um, in the, the field of, you know, weapons that you can equip. Um, but if you equip something like Primary Merciless, um, we'll definitely knock that down to something reasonable. But it's definitely not on the level of, say, like pistols. Low Riven Disposition. This is a strong weapon. It's one of the strongest... Uh, shotguns in the game. Uh, it's definitely S tier. If you don't include the new Incarnon weapons, which have really busted passives. Um, especially the 50% chance for 2000% damage, which is an actual multiplier. So if you don't include those, this is the best shotgun in the game. Um, definitely really good for uh, slash procs. Uh, so crit chance 20%, crit multiplier 2.2, status is 0.3%, pure puncture. Let's take a look at the alt fire. Uh, decent accuracy. It's The glaive is kind of homing. Um, but the thing about it is, is that it has an AoE attached to it when it hits and it explodes. Uh, six meter range, that is very good. Um, the thing to consider is that the glaive is guaranteed to proc two stacks. So any status chance that we add to this is increasing the chance of it proccing more stacks. But the glaive in and of itself does deal, on the direct impact of the glaive, deals slash damage, which is pretty nice. Um, it's not going to be game-breaking, but having a primary fire that's pure puncture and a glaive 
that's pure slash, where the radial attack is the part that's um, giving you the extra statuses. We'll load on some guys to shoot. So you have the primary fire. One, two, and three is a crit. The alt fire, you can see it bouncing around. Scales with multi-shot. So you can get more glaives. Um, the initial multi-shot is one for the glaive, but if you have, like, galvanized hell or something like that, you can have more glaives. Uh, a mechanic to take note of is when you're firing, if you hold the alt fire, it pulls it back. Sometimes you have to double click it. So you can get it most times, um, but it's definitely a hold. Yeah, it's hard to see. It's a tiny little glaive. But the main thing is that the status chance on this is huge, and it has two forced procs. Where it's getting the statuses from is if you notice, there's the slash chance that's coming from the direct hit of the glaive. The other statuses are coming from the glaive AoE. And it can proc Blast, which is innate. And you have the four primary elements. Heat, Cold, Electric, Toxin is part of the pool that it can proc from. So with the Glaive, you can proc up to six statuses. And see, there we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this weapon scales incredibly well. And you can see when we shoot, the damage is going up and down. Because of the additional status effects. Each status effect gives you 60 base damage, like a serration, uh, or a merciless stack, um, or even a galvanized, uh, what is it, savvy, all, all additive together. So the raw damage of this weapon can get incredibly high. And also the thing that helps is the heat armor shred can boost your damage also. And that's what's causing the damage to jump around so much. So f figuring out like a build for this where it's like, oh, it does like X amount of damage is kind of difficult because there's so much happening at once. But just remember, there's the passive of the weapon where you get additional damage based on statuses affecting the target. That is additive to serration or Primary Merciless, which is also additive to the Galvanized uh, Savvy mod. So just keep in mind those three all add together. There's no multiplicative damage there. Um, galvanized Savvy will be considered uh, multiplicative if you're using um, like Eclipse, which will further boost your damage. So keep that in mind. So let's go over our options. Uh, for those of you, I'm going to go over as many builds as I can. Um, and now that I know how to do chapters, I'll divide this up and I'll try to stick to each one. So let's start with the uh, new bro friendly build. We're just going to go point blank. We're going to do crit. Ravage. I'm assuming you have hell and let's do corrosive. We're going to be doing that anyway. Corrosive. Um, and say, what am I forgetting? Oh, fire rate. There we go. So we have some feel good stats. Damage, crit chance, crit damage, corrosive, fire rate, and multi-shot. 
all feel good stats. And I guess we could go status chance. So all feel good stats. If you see everything turned green, we're buffing the weapon uh, as much as possible um, for its base while adding a preferred element to kill Grenier with, which would be corrosive in this instance. Um, there would be an argument for doing uh, say prime Ch chilling grasp uh, to give you when hitting like elite grenier units um, where they're not weak to corrosive but they're weak to radiation you can get a bonus also from cold so there would definitely be an argument for that if you like raw damage builds it's definitely viable. I just don't think there's going to be room on this build because there's so many things to consider. But let's see, let's let's see where this gets us. Uh, actually, let me do, let me do this just to show in case you don't have um, the primed version. Let's see where this gets us. So we're gonna go back and bop our dudes. All right, our damage is at 600. Seven hundred died. I'm seeing an orange, but I can't tell what it is. I think it was thirteen hundred, but don't quote me on that. But as you can see, we're getting an uh, additional procs. We're getting the corrosive proc now. Um, the damage gets very high very quick. So even with the new bro friendly build, you will never be dealing with a level 190 exo. Because they're railjack units, and I think they're, they only spawn in at like 100. So even without Hunter Munitions, we're able to raw damage these guys down. Headshots obviously do more damage. So 760, we're obviously seeing about the 760, I saw a couple of 840s. Um, pretty, pretty good damage considering the, the mods that are on here. Um, obviously something like prime charge shell would do significantly higher. Um, <clears throat> and I'm actually going to end up recommending, um, a raw damage build for this. I know that seems kind of counterintuitive since you could equip stuff like hunter munitions but the the damage that this weapon gets up to is just so high unless you're doing like a long survival um or like a like a cascade or something where the enemies scale super fast you just aren't you're going to be killing the enemies faster than the first hunter munitions proc has the chance to trigger so the idea of using hunter munitions yes it definitely gives you additional scaling yes it's true damage but if you can raw damage the enemies down faster than a second that first slash proc hasn't even had the chance to trigger yet so why even have it equipped you know what i mean like all right so let's upgrade our build a little bit we're going to start equipping some prime mods um, we're going to swap over to Galvanized. Um, so this would be... Uh, you started Steel Path. Um, and you've done your arbitrations. Going to do some Prime Mods. Okay, so we need Fire Rate. Um, I'm not going to equip Faction Mods yet. But okay, so we have set damage, damage with status chance, multi-shot, corrosive, fire rate. Let's get some crit on here. Uh, gonna do critical deceleration um, and primed ravage. And I'm gonna leave a slot 
left, and I'm going to talk about that uh, after this. So this would be like a steel path. Well, the other one can do steel path also, but this is going to be a significantly stronger build. Um, definitely higher tier. You're going to have seen Barrow a couple times because of the, the primed mods. Your damage is going to be way higher, even though our damage went down. Um, but all of this is now scaling damage. Um, the corrosive damage portion will scale in your damage multiplicatively with your base damage. So this gets amped, the Sea-Doo passive gets amped, Merciless amps, and then Corrosive will then scale on top of that. So it's multiplicative. So let's see how we do now. All right, we went from needing a clip per enemy to now we're two, three shotting them. And there you go. So the damage is way higher, obviously. What do I have on here? Okay, I have acceleration, so it's not messing with the damage. Okay, so we're fine. Yeah, I saw the trigger was like, oh, did I leave tempo on? Um, so this would be easily steel path ready. This would clearly do steel path. But I left this other spot here without a mod in it. Uh, reason being is if you are sourcing your viral from a panzer, you do not need to equip it on your weapon, right? Um... So if you're running a Panzer, you can, are then free to run raw damage or more scaling damage on your weapon, either hyper-focusing on, um, on the base damage of the weapon or hyper-focusing on slash damage to be able to kill enemies, right? So it, it depends on what you feel, but because of the primed mods... And because of the uh, galvanized mods, the Sea-Doo, frankly, is just going to be an expensive bitch to level and to form a, up into its maximum power, if you will. Now, the easiest way to scale this uh, would actually be for raw damage, is because you're, you've literally just run out of mods to increase the base damage. And even with the other Prime mod, I wouldn't be able to increase my damage by more than what a cleanse mod can, a primed one. If you don't have this, the next best in slot for more damage, and there's an argument for it, uh, is actually to equip the prime, the prime chilling. So you see the damage; it goes up 600. Obviously, the uh, the status types are geeked. But the damage is the same. This is a this is very very powerful. If you can keep like obviously move this up here, or move uh, and swap prime chilling grasp and hell if you're trying to copy this build, so you get cold as an independent element. So you at least gain the bonus damage against alloy armor, right? Like that's pretty positive for if you're going a raw damage build. And then another thing you can do is take off Spaz and outsource your fire rate to that, to, to the Arcane Tempo. Um, and you know what, let's... What do we got here? Uh, action, swap. All right, so this is going to be basically what we can get. This will do hella damage against alloy targets. So this is food for thought. But I like running on this because the damage is so high. 
as a personal choice, I like just raw damaging the enemies down. Because this weapon basically is a built-in primer with a built-in condition overload or a built-in uh, galvanized savvy. Because galvanized savvy gives you, when it's stacked up to two, 80% bonus damage. The condition overload that's built into the CDU gives you 60 per status. So where normally you would be getting 80 bonus damage on direct damage, you're getting, what, 140 per status type? And then you add all of that together, and then it adds additively with Primary Merciless. Right? So, let's see what this does. We'll get our statuses. Alright, 1300. 15k, we're still stacking. 4k. 4k, and a 17k on a headshot. And the damage is going to jump up and down a little bit. Okay, 4,700, give or take. And that's against ferrite armor, right? But the choice that I ended up coming to with this is even though you won't have the bonus damage against alloy armor, personally, I noticed that just running the smite mod, because even with the alloy... Okay, so 1341 plus 55, hold on, okay, 1341 plus 55%, okay, so in terms of raw damage, my effective base da or my effective raw damage is 2078 and a half so whatever um for corrosive so the 1965 with the prime chilling mod is still less raw damage and then it puts another element into the mix where i would come out ahead against alloy slightly um, but the downside is, is it would actually dilute my damage down because the damage type with the quanta um, would end up reducing my damage against ferrite. So this is pure personal preference. Um, if you're looking for raw damage, it is best when you are not gaining a bonus against alloy. Uh, which are like elite units, right? They're they're rarer than most enemies that you're killing. Uh, it would be better in my mind to just raw damage down the tougher enemies, but keep the kill rate up against everything else. So j just to cover what I said again, in case I said it poorly, if I add in place of primed cleanse Garnier the prime chilling mod the prime cold mod prime chilling grasp this mod if it costs me primed cleanse grenier causes me to lose damage um so it's it's up to you what you want to do um if you can run both I see that as an absolute positive, but you you probably gonna have to riven out of it though. But say for example, uh, let's see, incendio no. Right, so I lose damage here, but I gain the bonus against alloy. 
if you are comfortable running this setup and you have the fire rate, uh, the fire rate arcane for shotguns, arcane tempo, this will provide you with a bunch, a bunch of raw damage. But you will be hitting for less if it, if the prime cleanse grenier costs you a chilling grasp mod, because you have to fit a fire rate on this to keep your damage up, because three is kind of low. And for bullet hosing, which is essentially what you're doing with the primary fire, um, <clears throat> it, it, it affects your kill rate. Because effectively, even though you're running a little bit of punch through, um, this will punch through smaller enemies. Like, literally, physically smaller. But if it's like an enemy with like a shield, this isn't getting through that. Um, and say like bigger ones, like if you're doing like a Kuva Survival... This isn't getting through um, the, the Kuva guys, the Kuva Guardians. That's not getting through the Kuva Guardians. Um, so it does help a little bit. Some of your multi-shot will get through doors, which will help with your kill rate. Because that way, like, when you're shooting, if you're shooting an enemy that's standing in front of a door or, like, say, a really thin wall, um, occasionally you can get through it. But I, I prefer the efficiency of the original build. So I, for personal preference, I don't run this. If you don't have Prime Cleanse Grenier, there is absolutely nothing wrong with running, um, and you have the, the charge shell, there is nothing wrong if you don't have that for running this for raw damage. And if you don't have the fire rate mod, uh, Spaz would go here. Um, if you do have the arcane and a free arcane slot on your frame, uh, you could then run like Hunter Munitions here. But the weapon just deals so much raw damage. Personally, I went with a raw damage build. So let's look at our, let's get some of our scaling back. We'll see what this does. Um, the only thing that I found is a helpful option is because of the way shotguns work fall off the the fall off damage shotguns as a whole tend to deal a ton of raw damage this one especially but as a whole shotguns tend to deal a ton of raw damage so for personal preference um as i'm firing into a row of enemies you're not going to be aiming at your first enemy um, 26 meters away. That's a good distance. But when you kill something and that enemy only takes up two or three bullets, or two or three pellets, right? Um, the other projectiles will then travel further. So, so let's take a look at this. So up until here, this guy receives a hundred pennies on the dollar of the damage, right? And it's it's a feel thing. Now you see that guy took some additional damage. Let me prime him. Okay, pull the glaive back. Now the guy behind took damage. So no damage on that guy. Okay, no damage on that guy. Trigger, that guy took damage from the punch through. No damage that time. No damage. We'll boost, so it's a little more obvious. Alright. It's hard to show, but it's a feel thing. So that's why I'm labeling it as a flex slot. Um, the punch through makes it a little easier to shoot through rows of enemies or like columns where they're like all lined up coming at you. It can go through enemies into the next group. So this slot is a flex slot. If you can outsource 
uh, the fire rate. If you if you can't get it onto the frame or you don't want to, listen, I get it. Um, that goes away, and this is your build. Um, if you don't have Prime Cleanser Grenier, Hunter Munitions goes here. Just to give you a little bit of additional scaling. There is so much base damage on this. I I would easily be willing to claim that you don't need Viral on the weapon to boost the the damage from it, even if you're not running the Panzer, um, which you should be as your default, unless you're doing like a like a, a hyper farm or something, um, because there is just so much base damage on the weapon to begin with because of all the additional scaling, because Merciless is going to increase your slash procs, uh, Savvy is going to increase your slash procs, um, the passive on the weapon is going to increase your slash procs. That is just, it's so high already. You will be able to kill something by the time the, generally by the time the first slash proc hits. But if you don't, just a little bit of hunter munitions can go a long way. Right? So like, the, the slash proc didn't even get the chance to proc. So that one got the first one out. So with this, the entire row is gone in, what, a second? Hunter Munitions didn't even get the proc on those, so you might as well run a faction mod. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it's up to you. Um, you have to have these bonus stats, crit chance, Crit damage, fire rate, multi-shot, base damage, preferably um, if you can... T oh, also, if you can tolerate a slightly longer reload, um, Deadhead is definitely more damage. And not only that, the uh, damage stays with you longer. But if you if you really want the, the reload and you really want the ammo... Um, it, again, that's personal choice, but Deadhead is definitely more damage. So, it, it's up to you. Um, technically, it is a loss uh, of the reload speed and ammo max. Um, and you fire so fast with uh, Shotgun Spaz and Arcade Tempo that I would say in that circumstance, doing Merciless might be a little better. Um, but this, th these are some options... Um, this is definitely a higher-end build. Um, and where's Grenier? There we go. That's why I use this. Uh, if I had... If I wanted to scale this more, and I was running Arcane Tempo like I am right now, I, I would put Hunter Munitions in here just to get the additional scaling down, right? Get Fire Rate over here. Freeze up a mod slot. You get that, that feel-good slash damage viral from the Panzer. Um, and you got all four elements from the alt fire. Um, and let me show you that. Right. Okay, so one slash proc got off. None got off there. Those guys are dead. No slash procs. Getting 13k slash, or yeah, 1300 slash, 31k raw. Okay, that guy just died from the slash proc. Um, so you have a couple options, but this would be if you're looking for a build that's core. It would be these these mods right here, as with all primaries, these four stats. If it's a crit, if it's a um, if it's a weapon that can utilize crit, crit chance, crit damage are uh, mandatory. Fire rate, in very few circumstances, is not put on the weapon, where it's like a like a Kuva Shakur or something like that. And even then, it can benefit from it a little bit, um, provided you don't go over if you're using the hemorrhage mod. Um, but multi-shot damage obviously is going to go on every weapon. Multi-shot's going to go on every weapon. Uh, you can utilize crit with this, so crit, crit chance crit damage is going on. Um, vigilante supplies. Um, 
this weapon is definitely worth the Exilus slot if you're concerned about spending plat or uh, maybe you just don't want to, then you can put it here um, and then do elect uh, corrosive like this. This would be viable also. It would obviously definitely do less damage, um, especially if you're short on arcanes. This is a viable uh, build for all of the star chart and I would say is pretty comfy for most of Steel Path. Uh, especially against the Grenier. Um, so just play with it as you want. Um, this is pretty core for this weapon. Merciless puts in work. Um, Deadhead gets your damage up way higher. Um, what am I missing? There we go. And and this is the build that that I was using. So it, it's the build I'm using without uh, 100 munitions, just pure raw damage. Um, but I was using Deadhead, and to show you the difference in the damage for that, it, it gets a little nutty. All right, 36K pellets. Thirty-eight K pellet, thirty-four K pellet, thirty-eight K, hundred and twenty-three K pellet, Jesus, thirty-five K orange, hundred and fourteen K pellet, hundred and twelve K pellet. Yeah, the damage is absurdly high. And, and just to sort of drive the point home, let's do a little bit of math. Um, the reason why I don't do hundred munitions on here, and follow my logic on this is because for most of the star chart and for most of the steel path, the enemies just straight up do not have that much health, right? Um, now, obviously, if you're doing like level caps or something like that, obviously adjust your build. And if you are doing that, you probably don't need this. Okay, my explanation. Um, I guess I could show like, you know, I'll show like a, like a better scaling build, uh, but it's not that crazy. It's literally just take shotgun spaz off and put 100 munitions here. Um... So we have 1341 times 12.6. Okay. Nice. Um, and then this is the reason why I don't equip hunter munitions on it. This is... Hold on. I just multiplied those twice. Give me a second. Give me a second. 1341 times... 6.52. Okay. This is my base. Yeah, I, I multiplied the multi shot twice. Don't do that. Um, so my raw damage per second before any scaling has come into effect from elements is 8,743 damage a second with no elements being considered. Okay. My raw damage will go up and down slightly based on uh, the enemy weakness. Um, okay, hold on. Plus 55%. Okay, here we go. Incorporating the faction mod. So assuming I'm shooting uh, Grenier. Um, so 13,552 damage raw. Now this will then go up and down slightly based on the enemy that I am shooting. So against enemies with ferrite armor, this number goes way up. Uh, against enemies with alloy armor, it will go nowhere. It will be exactly this. Um, actually, I think it still goes up. Aren't they weak to uh, puncture a little bit? Okay, it will go up slightly. Because they have a plus 15% weakness to puncture. So it will go up a little bit. Okay, yeah, they, it will go up a little bit. Um, but not a lot. So this damage is very, very effective against Grenier. Because it's pure puncture and pure corrosive. And what, a uh, little more than a 
two parts, one part split. Um, so against Grenier, raw damage wise, this will do incredibly well. But here's the thing. Okay, so hold on. I need to save that. Okay, so then we are going to do um, 360. Actually, hold on. So it's 360. We'll save that. And then we will do uh, 8 times the 6 damage types. 6 damage types plus corrosive is 7. Okay, hold on. So 80 times 7 is 560. And then we have plus uh, 60 times the 8 damage types again because of the passive. Uh, I just screwed that up. Hold on. So 60 times 8. Okay, so now we're going to add 40, 40, 480 plus 560 plus 620 together to give our total percent increase. And this is 16.6, uh, sorry, 17.6 times because this is a 1,660% increase in damage of this number. Okay, so we have our total DPS of 87... 43 plus 1,660% equals this much DPS raw. Um, and then on top of it, you also have the corrosive damage reduction. You have the, uh, the, the corrosive armor reduction. Then you have the heat armor reduction. Um, you have, uh, what is it, the, the puncture increase. You also have slash that can occasionally RNG. So this weapon has really, really high DPS without a crazy build. Right? So this number will get you really, really far. And this is damage per second. So this is the amount of damage, if you shoot something in the face after hitting them with their alt fire, or anywhere on the body, this is the amount of damage that you get off before the first slash proc from Hunter Munitions gets dealt. Before, if you trigger Hunter Munitions on the initial hit, this is the amount of damage you will do in the next second before the first slash tick hits. And personally... I'm okay with that. Now, if you want additional scaling, tempo goes on the frame, and you swap out for this. And this will give you all of the damage in the world. Because that base damage, that 1,660%, is what goes and boosts your slash damage. And then you have the faction damage on top of it. And you have the Panzer Spores boosting everything. And it just gets absurd. And let me see if I can even show. Okay. Let's see if I can even show what the damage is. Okay, 14k, 18k. Okay, 14k slash, 11k slash, 51k slash on a headshot, because I'm using deadhead. Right. And then you have each of the multi-shot, each part of the multi-shot with a chance to trigger slash. So 900, 9k, 2500, 1800. Dies from a headshot, alpha damage, 136 on a headshot from one pellet, 66k yellow, 10k, it goes up and down because of the heat armor stripping, but 
you, you see the damage, and then you have the deadhead multiplier on top of it, right? So the damage gets nuts. And this is part of the reason why I'm just like, I'm okay without running Hunter Munitions. Like, in killing these guys, it was in like two, three shots. Hunter Munitions didn't even have the chance to do damage yet. It, it didn't even have the chance to do damage, so you might as well just throw in an arcane, uh, a galvanized acceleration um, or more fire rate. And, and do more base damage, right? Like, it's... That's why I'm saying, like, for this, I just don't feel like this weapon needs Hunter Munitions until super late, um, when the armor gets so high that you start needing something more than just the armor bypass um, from, like, the corrosive portion, because it's going to uh, reduce the enemy armor uh, by 80%. And then heat is going to strip at another 50%. Uh, percent, so now you're at 90% armor reduction. And then the corrosive portion of this damage, literally the 76.5, is going to ignore 75% uh, of the remaining health, or armor um, against ferrite. So the, the, the shred gets pretty insane um, against ferrite, which is most of the stuff that you're killing. Um, so it, it's just... This weapon does a lot of damage, but this is the build. If you don't have Cleanse Grenier, that goes there, but you're probably going to be killing them before the first slash tick goes off. I'd say 90% of the time, um, but it's a nice stopgap. Um, but with this, the, the damage is nuts, um, and there's not really much more I could say about this. Uh, I guess there is one more thing. Okay, so there's this weird interaction with Zadas. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, wild Zadas. Right? So the weapon has... a On the glaive itself... Has the chance to trigger... A slash proc. Let me get a couple stacks first. Hold on, let me see if I can get it. It's it's RNG. But the slash proc gets amped so much that it'll one shot. Uh, okay. Oh, that was one. Was a two shot. It's not amped because it's uh because I have deadhead on. Yep, that was one. Yep, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you see it. It forces the glaive to f the first one that triggers it to fucking ricochet back onto the head and destroys them. I don't know how to like it happens RNG wise. All right, I lost my stacks. It, it requires high damage, though, like your uh, your passives and everything to be uh, merciless and whatnot to be up. Yeah, the uh, so this is something interesting. It, it falls off super hard. Like I tried, yeah, like that. Okay, oh, that was one. You heard it. That guy is gone. And this is the alt fire, the super weak alt fire. But you gotta be able to hit a headshot with it. So you just walk up and blast him in the face. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, but it's on the second one, so you gotta constantly be re-triggering it. But anyway, weird weird interaction with Zadas. Cause it's uh The glaive is pure slash, so you actually have to hit him with it. So you gotta basically walk up and shoot him in the face with it, but it does so much damage. Anyway, anyways, 
Uh, y'all have a blessed day. Uh, and that final thing, you have to hit them with the glaive. It's not the AoE. You have to use the AoE to prime. So you fire the glaive, get the statuses, then you recall it, and on the second shot is where you get the massive bonus damage. It, there's some weird interaction. I have There's so many statuses and so much stuff going on, I haven't been able to tie down what's causing it because the weapon has an 8 armor shred on it because of the heat proc. But anyway, y'all have an excellent day. Uh, I hope this helps for the people in the clan that were asking about a Sidu build. Man, this went a little longer than I thought, but here is the full explanation of how to use this weapon that I could come up with. Y'all have a blessed day.